So what I have here, um, this is an, an F15 T8 warm white uh, fluorescent light. I like to call them um, anything lights because you will find them in anything. Um, vending machines, slot machines, arcade cabinets. Um, this is the same style of bulb that you can find with those usually pretty awful color 80s and 90s under the kitchen counter lights but the big thing i go with them use them for is that if i turn the lights off here there we go is that they don't just turn on immediately they do flicker themselves to life just like that and the idea here is that um I'll put them in hallways, I'll put them in utility rooms, I'll even put them outside in the weather. They will, for the most part, take a beating, but it also helps add a little bit more um, dramatic effect. I don't want that to short out over there. Um, when you turn the light on into a room. <clears throat> this is a, I believe it's a 15 watt tube. Yes, so this is a 15 watt tube. These lamps are also very simple devices. You have a choke ballast here, it's just a magnetic core, and you have a starter. In this case, it's an FS2 starter, and that's all there is to it. For the most part, these have long since been replaced, like most other uh, fluorescents, with actual compact fluorescents, and I happen to have a handful of one here right now. This is actually a lamp that I recently replaced, which had been running for a good 10 to 12 years it really beat the bathtub curve in terms of um, often just how um, regularly these will fail under use because well the the early ones were not too bad but the later ones um, were significantly cheaper and the biggest problem is that the ballasts would burn out catch fire even and they would die this one's not that bad at all even the main cap here which is a uh, 200 volt 10 microfarad that's a weird value it says that it is a rubicon capacitor it isn't even blown out like the board it doesn't even look like it got super super hot i do suspect what actually happened here is that finally the uh, the bulb itself has gone end of life and well this is technically still good but this isn't but it had me thinking when I was able to pull it apart this far, and I realized that it does have standard filament ends, like a regular fluorescent tube. Could I drive this with this? Um, and the first thing that comes to mind is probably not, because the filament gap in here is significantly larger than I'm going to find with the filament gap inside of here. But nonetheless, this, the, the lamp is no good anyways, so I'm just going to see if I can actually wire this in to work with this. And it may actually work, or we could be, uh, the bulb itself could be too far gone. Now I'm going to unclip this for the moment because I would rather not electrocute myself. And I'm going to kick my foot pedal here out of the way so I don't step on it. This style of lamp was used in North America right up until LED, um, white LEDs really began to take off, especially even elsewhere in the world. Like this was a very common style of lamp. Um, but what isn't very common in North America anymore is the um, I'm having some fight. I'm fighting the starter here. Is this whole preheat thing? This starter here. Um, we don't use those. I understand that in uh, European and Asian con uh, and pretty much anywhere else in the world, starters and these, this style of fluorescent light is still commonly used. But here in Canada specifically, and I know for the United States as well, we didn't really use these by the time the 1970s came around. And this just comes off. So it is uncommon, but there was a time when the bigger lamps, the four foot tubes, would have been operated with starters and these magnetic choke ballasts. 
These days, it's now mainly restricted to these smaller tube lights, and the early compact fluorescent lights um, used the same style of magnetic ballast and starters, but the starters and those were typically integrated. Okay, so what I will do here is I will grab some alligator clips, and we're just simply replacing the socket ends on this. and then wiring this up exactly like a regular fluorescent tube. And this should be pretty straightforward. Um, three things are going to hap uh, may happen here. Uh, the first one is um, the current draw over the filament's too high and the filament's just gonna immediately pop. Um, Electro Boom actually had a video about this a little while ago regarding what the heck the purpose of the filament is in there and why you needed the ballast and why you needed a starter. Though his starter was in effect a little bit more hackish. Can I screw my starter base back in here so it doesn't cause me problems? There we go. All right, so no wires are touching. And now I will grab our line voltage again. I wanna point out that right now, um, the foot pedal's not being stepped on, so I can do that and not electrocute myself. And I'm just going to, I do have this fancy ground tether on this, but I'm actually attaching straight to the chassis here with the ground, that way I can also strain relief not having to pull on these. Okay, so where's our starter? I'm just gonna put that in there. Make sure our wires are all nicely separated. They look okay. Can you see that? You can? Okay, let's give this a try. So I'm going to turn the lights off and I'm now going to step on the pedal and this may explode and three two one I see oh okay I can't interesting it almost settled down but yes, it looks like the, uh, the bulb is a little too far gone to be able to fully strike an arc. Let me turn the lights on again. There we go. Um, so what was happening there is that um, I could get, it was actually striking in the first two inches on either side around the filaments, but either it was because it's specific, it's expecting this electronic ballast, which is giving more of a kick, or because the bulb is so end of life at this point here, if I were to step on this, it's, it's not actually completely lighting, which is unfortunate. So, um, well, there's our answer. I guess trying to light this bulb um, with this ballast arrangement is uh, inconclusive unless I really were to go and tear apart another one of these lamps that I do know works and try again. But I would rather not do that at this time. Oh well, that was an interesting little experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, have a good one.